Welcome to another episode of the Alex Anderson Podcast. Uh, today we have my good friend Brian McCarthy. He's a New York City-based actor. Um, he's been on everything. Seriously, go search his IMDb. A few examples are Hulu's High Fidelity, uh, Netflix's Orange is the New Black, The Deuce on HBO, Billions on Showtime, anything that shoots in New York, uh, he's pretty much been on it all, so definitely check out his IMDb. Please hit the subscribe button. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the like. If you're listening to this on audio, please subscribe and please leave a review on Apple. That as well helps us immensely. Thank you so much. You can follow me at Alex Anderson TV on Instagram and Twitter. Send me a tweet. We, we have no idea if you like this or not, so please send us a tweet. Also, I just want to say to everyone who's been watching Timing on Prime, thank you so much. Uh, it's been making a huge difference. The algorithms has really been taking off lately. So please keep watching everybody. Tell your friends. It's my first feature um, in the U.S. and U.K. You can watch it on Prime um, starring Mike Cannon, Gracie Carly. Mike plays an up and coming comedian. The feedback people have been sending me is fantastic. So thank you for watching it. If you're not in the U.S., you can go to alexanderson.tv and I'll email you a copy. Thanks so much. He told me that my he, 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 he. Yeah. For your podcast right now. I feel like we're in a scene right now, and it's a trope. <laughs> <laughs> so a Alex and I met in, in improv, yes. and we loved each other, and we were terrible. Horrible. Uh, as partners in yes, scenes. in scenes. Yeah, that was really weird. So weird. Because we, we weren't so bad doing scenes with other people. No. We would yeah. step out. Like, I would see you step out, or you would see me step out, and we would be so excited yeah. because we loved each other. And then we were both blank. Yeah. You know, our like for whatever reason, we just like did not do well together in scenes. Yeah. And I honestly am getting that vibe again. I know. And I don't know why. And we, we also work together in other contexts and we don't have this issue. Yeah. It's just, and it's just you and me. Are we having an issue right now? <laughs> are we are we making a oh my God. Um so we met in improv. Yep. We met at UCB. Mm -hmm. And uh, and four hundred one or four hundred one. Brian and I were both in very. We when we met, we we clicked right away. But yeah, we were both time. in very interesting places. Oh yeah, where you were going through a breakup. Yeah, real real of a long uh, time, seven year yeah. sort of like your college girlfriend. Yeah 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 yeah. And it that's so you were going really through rocky, that. losing a lot of sleep, um, and. I won't speak for you. No, you can. I was like, I was like, I think I need to get sober. <laughs> yeah, it. it was like in that time where I was figuring that out. And yeah, the, and literally, and I was I drinking did. my ass off. <laughs> like, I never really thought about that part of it too. I don't even know if I was ever really that, because you were so honest with me about how you were. I remember when we went to that bar, Mustang Sally's, or was it the other one? I think it was Mustang Sally's. After yeah. we all graduated or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and you told me you're like, yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm actually not gonna get a beer. I'm I'm experimenting with sobriety. Yes. And I was like one of those, <laughs> like the worst response ever. I think I was sort of like, why, <laughs> what, sort of, yeah. you know, because like, because the thought at that point, like the only way I knew how to squash my anxiety w was alcohol, mm -hmm. and it's that feeling I felt like threatened by the idea of like people that I I love and admire, like choosing sobriety yeah and you were like yeah it's help, helping me write my jokes yeah i was yeah, having crazy writer's block man yeah uh yeah no 100 percent. but you didn't allude to being an alcoholic at that point at that point i didn't think i was uh. i didn't know i mean look uh timeline wise mm -hmm. i literally went through like a six month period of just quitting drinking and it was yeah. right in that window um, my, my 28th birthday rolled around. I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll have a bit and you know, when it had a couple crazy days and I was like, uh, yeah, no, no, I, I have a problem wow. and should stay sober uh, on a, I got questions for you, man. Um, as a improviser, mm -hmm. um, as someone who was very involved in the New York city improv scene, how on a scale of one to 10, how happy were you that the pit closed down due to COVID? Oh, I mean, I was 
It's funny. I mean, I don't, I don't identify as someone who's deep in the improv scene. Really, honestly, man, I'm kind of, I'm kind of making a joke because oh, yeah, oh, I'm oh, a ten. Oh. I was thrilled that you the were pit, happy. Oh no, I, no, I, that, it was a joke, man. I don't yeah. expect you to be happy that the pit closed down. Yeah. So you know, uh, Alex you always probably... had a beef with the pit, um, and I felt like I really, uh, you know, I guess you could say I was. I was hurt from not making it past 401 at UCB twice. And then I felt like the Wait, pit... Wait, did they not pass you into uh, advanced? Yeah, I never got passed Are, you're, twice. You're kidding me. Yeah. No, I'm not kidding. That I, boggles my mind. That boggles my mind. Well, I was, I was severely anxious. I was not in the right place. My scenes were no good. I could be a funny guy, but yeah. like I wasn't that good at... at Improv. At improv. Interesting. Really. When Interesting. I was taking classes I, at UCB. I, I guess I got to set this up and I'll, I'll yeah. make sure I have a note of it. But I mean, Brian is an amazing comedic actor. So oh, it boggles you. my mind that you couldn't pass. Uh, yeah, I mean, UCB is, t- you know, that the, the Broad City girls never got on a house team at the pit or at, yeah. at, uh, at UCB. You know, what's actually really funny is I was. Um, I, you know, I made, a, I made a lot of friends at UCB, and I, but I was always really. You know, I wasn't really ever in that place where it was just pure fun. Like, I would experience it in brief moments. But there's, like, so many people that do it for such, like, pure reasons. Like, yes. they, they are just having fun. But as an actor who wanted a career acting, I couldn't help but, like, you know, feel that that desire to, like, use it to, to help me you know, I, I, I was trying to, I felt too much pressure on my, I put too much pressure on myself to be a great improviser so it could help me Dude, totally. go further with my acting career. And I think that really sucks. Uh, it gets in the way of just enjoying and playing and having fun with it. But I made a lot of friends like you and Kyle and uh, a couple other guys. Uh, I can't remember his last name, Ben. Uh, he's like a really successful animator now um not an animator he's he's created uh like really successful animated television shows but anyway we hit it off and he invited me to be on like a practice group and i just like i was like meh i'd never showed up because i because it was just it was such a source of anxiety for me i was like i love this guy he's awesome and he he was like you'd be a great fit for the rest of this this group uh, if you want to join. He did not use those words. I don't know if he thought I was a great fit. I just made that all up. But anyway, he invited me to be on this practice group, and I never uh, and I never showed up because I was like, you know what, improv is just making me anxious. Like it's just making me anxious. I don't want to. Um, Alex just pointed at the microphone. I did. I'm gonna- Uh, so close. Where do you need it? Is that better? Yeah, this is the, a really long story. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, but it's just so funny because I never went. It was just, you know, I was at the uh, 20, 28. Improv was making me severely anxious. I never showed up to this practice group, but I kept is on. Is this story going somewhere? Yeah, <laughs> it is. I kept on getting, uh, you know, they, they'd loop me in on the schedule, on the invites. I never showed up. And then I fell in love with Broad City and I started watching it. Yep. And uh, and I was like, why do these names sound so familiar to me? And it was so funny. Yeah, they were they were both in my email. Hilarious. Yeah. They were in the group. Yeah. Hilarious. And everybody's doing great that was in that practice group. I cannot believe that story tied in. What's that? I, I can't believe that story tied in. Yeah. I, it actually amazing. That's a great yeah. story. Thank yeah. you so much, <laughs> that's, Alex. That's a great story. I this did. is how you make a fucking podcast. <laughs> Ow! Yeah. I really didn't think uh, I really didn't think it was. Yeah. Uh yeah, man. They listen, yeah. they were big in the improv scene and the uh, you know, oh never really God. got the traction at UCB. Yeah. UCB was it. I actually have a lot of appreciation about for UCB. Oh as, yeah, as, dude, as, me too. Especially having experienced the pit, you know? Yeah. Um, How dare you? When did you know you wanted to be an actor? I think, I mean, since, I, like, I was a really young kid, really. Like, I would go always, I remember I, I would always go to the dentist in this 
dentist, she would always ask me, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I would say, like, a Marine. And then the next year, I would say, like, a lawyer. And then the next year, I would say, like, a firefighter. And then eventually, I realized that really what I was attaching to were, like, characters that I'd seen in movies. And, you know, like, I was like, oh, I want to sort of play all these things in movies. I think by, like, I was probably, like, five or six. Yeah. I real I like, and I think I, I also grew up in a, in a TV heavy household. Like my mom and dad loved television and movies. My brother did. And so to me, it really like, uh, it, I thought that that was the most important thing you could ever pursue in your whole life. I think it was like, it took me many years to eventually realize that like not everybody wanted to be an actor. Because I was just like, isn't this what we're, we're all really <laughs> wanting? That makes perfect sense to yeah. me, man. That makes yeah. Per- yeah. Um, so forever. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that makes perfect but it, sense. But it was like, it took a well, long time. What's the most fun? Like, who wouldn't want to do that? Yeah. Like, I, well, I guess I, I still believe that. It's like, you know. And there are unhealthy, you know, family dysfunctional, a lot behind that there that I'm sure we'll get into. But well, just to be clear, we will absolutely not get into it. Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, we can if you want. Yeah. Oh, I thought that that's what this is all about. <laughs> no, we can uh, That's where I'm the most comfortable. Um, <laughs> no, uh, we can absolutely do it if you want. Uh, yeah, there was something I was going to say. And I my bad. That. Yeah. I mean, look, it's fun. It's yeah. fun. And then uh, did you, when did you tell your parents? Oh, yeah, that was what I was going to say. Was that deep down? I think I felt that, but like it was, it took a long time to actually, like, say, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Um, but when I went to co- like I started doing, uh, I started acting in plays and stuff in middle school. What plays? <sighs> Good question. <laughs> Little Mermaid, King no Dune, way. first role. Oh yeah. Who who were you? King Dune. Wow, that's yeah. like Ariel's dad, right? I don't think so. I think the play is a little different. I don't actually remember, but I think there's a different. There's another king. I think so. No, I, think, sh- I can't remember. Okay. I, f- I think I remember being like, God damn, I'm not that. I'm not the underwater king. Oh, okay. I'm like a. You're the father like of the prince, land maybe? maybe. Yeah, you're I the think father so. of the prince. There's gonna be a lot of Little Mermaid fans disappointed. In <laughs> and you're probably you can't marry a mermaid. Yeah, as I'm guessing. Nope. So supporting role, and uh, yeah. So then I, I, you know, I was doing that stuff, and then I went to college, and I had, you know, f- I had a alcohol fuel in my blood, and I, you know, I like went all in on like the clown of the town, sort of, you know, the dorm. I was just like. Everyone was filming me, like, doing pranks, running around. I was crazy. And everyone was like, you got to be a, an actor. You, you got to do And so I knew of a friend that had a manager in uh, the D.C. area. And I got this, like, she was mainly like a child, like a child actor uh, manager. But I started to go out for, like, weird little, like, roles in D.C. and, like, Maryland for, like, the Discovery Channel. And so, no like, way. Yeah, when I was, like, you know, 18. And uh, I got a few jobs, like, and uh, they were weird DC jobs. Like, I did a, I did a voiceover commercial for the draft, for like how to sign up for the draft. You know, the military draft, which was as we were going. You know, George W. Bush was president, and yeah. like things were heating up. And I booked this job, uh, so Selective Services. That's what I, I knew. I didn't know what that was when I went in. And then I get the script, and it was like, I was playing like a teenager, and I was like, Dad, you're such an idiot. You can enlist for the draft online. Go to www.selectiveservices.gov or something like that. So anyway, I, was, I made money, uh, you know, pimping out the draft. And I was like, yeah, this is, I could really do this. How horrible would you have felt if there was a draft? I would have felt... <laughs> would you have felt directly I would have felt something. Yeah, because I definitely <laughs> was already having some pretty lefty leanings at that age. So You, you would have been directly responsible. I know. But I, but I don't think... But it was a That gig. commercial was so great. You know, it's like I, ah. I wouldn't be like, man, my great teenager <laughs> performance actually got people to sign up for the draft. I never was that naive, you know. Yeah. 
That's a pretty funny. Uh, that's a pretty funny gig, man. Yeah. Uh, so you do that. You're get you're getting work in the D.C. area. Mm-hmm. But I was going to school for graphic design. I remember. Yes, at yeah. JMU, correct? Yeah. Yes. What's the bagel place named? In- Jesse's Bagels. There's another one. At JMU? Yeah. How do you know about JMU? Because I went, I stopped there on my way back from Florida because I had a friend who went to JMU. And I remember going to a, an amazing bagel place. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, all I remember, no, I was thinking of Jesse's Quick Lunch. There's another, whatever, we can talk yeah. about it afterwards. Um, so I you, hope we do. <laughs> <laughs> so you do graphic design. Uh huh. Are you thinking you're going to go into graphic design or are you thinking I'm going to be an actor? No, it was kind of a wuss out move going for graphic design. The the only yeah. I was thinking about the only time in yeah. my life yeah. I didn't march to my own beat because before uh, before college uh-huh. I was just like focused on hockey, you mm-hmm. know what I mean, doing sports. Yeah, and then I knew I was gonna do the stand up comedy thing. Uh-huh. The only time I kind of did someone else's agenda is college. You know, otherwise the only reason I went to college yeah. was to kind of get my family to kind of leave me alone. Yeah, um, literally that's the window of time in my life. After that, it was Alex's agenda. You know. Um, yeah, and you know this. Uh, so, I I I really like art. I've also always been a visual artist type. You're a great graphic designer. Oh, thanks. Yeah. No, I mean I used to growing up as a kid. I mean my favorite thing was to like draw. Uh, I mean, I think the whole thing was always escapism. I loved TV and movies uh, because I, I just, I didn't like being in the, in the suburbs. Yeah. There was like a feeling that I got there and I was always excited to imagine like a, just a different world. So I was way into TV and movies and uh, so, and, and drawing like characters and comic books and X-Men and all that stuff. So I got way into drawing, I sucked at sports. But I got into, I got fairly good at, at illustrating and painting and stuff through high school. And, and, uh, and I really was kind of torn. I was like, do I really, is it, is it acting or is it art? But uh, I, I decided graphic design just as like a sort of a fear-based, like this will pay the bills if, if nothing else Again, works I, out. Yeah, yeah. And one of my friend's moms, she was actually, she played Sally in Greece on Broadway. Um, and she, but she lived in my hometown, Alexandria, Virginia. And she was like, yeah, if you really want to be an actor, get some other degree to have like a decent job, like other than waiting tables. And you don't need to go to school for theater or acting. And you can just take classes when you get there. And I did no further research, you know? It's like, I just took that one I don't know if that was the right call. You know, I hated graphic design. I mean, there was a there was a lot that I liked about it at first, but in the end, I mean, I re- I was just really studying like magazine layout, and I just hated. I hated spending so much time sitting in front of a screen, clicking away at like I, I appreciate type typography and and all that stuff, but like I knew I did not want to do this. But I was like, oh God, I'm so deep. I graduated. I got an internship in New York at a advertising sort of like production house where I was just clicking on Photoshop. I lasted two days and I was like, I'm going all in with acting. I'm going to get like a regular side job as a doorman. And, and yeah, and I went and I did. I quit. I quit that internship. No way. Yeah. I walked up to it and I was like, I did it in person. I was so scared. Well, I was going to ask you how you decided to move to New York. So that's what yeah. brought you to New York was the internship. Well, I was also in, a, in, in that relationship that, yes. you know, my college girlfriend, we, she was also a graphic design major. She was from from like the Boston area. Yep. I'm from the D.C. area. And, yep. and, 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 and you know, you if you're a graphic designer, you you got to move. You don't want to be. You want to be in New York is like prime. Yes. So in the but in the back of my mind, I wasn't really talking much about like pursuing acting with her or even my friends because yeah. it's kind of embarrassing. It is embarrassing. It's like, who the hell do you think you are? You want to be an actor? Yeah. It's so embarrassing. Yeah. It, it's weird now that I have. I so didn't many, tell anyone I did stand up for like a year. Yeah. It just feels like once you build like a community of friends that are also pursuing it, it seems totally normal. Yes. But before you have that group of friends, it seems just like 
a it's totally crazy. like weird narcissistic sort of endeavor. Obviously it's a much milder and everything, but it's like coming out of the closet, it, <laughs> you yeah, know, and yeah. on like a much milder, less, uh, but it's like, yeah, I'm going to pursue this crazy goal, yeah. you know, of like, especially cause there was no, as, you know, I've thought of this before of like, mm-hmm. we're kind of the last generation that moved to New York to pursue an art form like pre podcast, pre inner, you know, there wasn't the oh information God. there is now. I was going to say that. Like, I, it feels You're like an flying excuse. Blind. But, right. You're blind. Re- Cause when you said you did that, you didn't like talk to anyone else or do yes. much more research. No, I'm glad you brought that up. There really wasn't. I literally based my entire game plan yeah. on this one paragraph in an unauthorized Jerry Seinfeld biography mm-hmm. where this guy was like, Oh, you want to do stand up? You got to move to New York. Was that a real quote? I don't oh, know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm right. like, oh, you want to do stand up? You yeah. got to move to New York. Yeah. I didn't have to, you know what I mean? I, I, had, I, I moved here blind. I had yeah. no, you know, and, and we really are like, you figure we moved here and the next couple of years podcasts start mm-hmm. where you could get these like way more information oh available. Now. It's crazy. You know? Yeah. The, the, uh, I mean, you know, I remember being in college and, and, the original iPod came out. Yeah. You know, there was no podcast. No. You know, MySpace came out while we were in college. And I was like, what the heck is that? You know, like it's, I don't, I don't even think that a lot of people much younger than us realize what that's like to not be able to really get the information that you're seeking for to, to understand. Like when I, when I, I, when I got the job as a doorman, to be my side job as I pursued acting, it took me like months, like maybe half a year of, of, of talking to them before we all became aware of the main website that's used f- for actors, which it's like the found, it's like the most necessary thing that you need to find out about auditions for projects and stuff. It's Can called, you say that yeah, website? It's called actors access. Actors access yes. And, I mean, now, you know, you could just find a thousand articles that aren't scams that are about like, what do you need to do as you, as a new actor? You know, we didn't have any of that. (laughs) I was pouring through backstage newspapers like an idiot. And we're the last generation. We're the last, we're literally like at the deadline of just flying blind. I had no idea. Moving to New York. And the amount of scams and it was Craigslist. And they're fake agencies, like <laughs> like making you, uh, my girlfriend, like got scouted by some like modeling scout, and she like got sucked into this thing where they were like, you've got potential, and but you need to spend like nine hundred dollars on our professional headshots. Oh yep. my god, there was that's so, an old school scam, dude. There was so much of that, <laughs> and there was no no way to look it up really. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. That's, that is, that is crazy. Yeah. Um, all right. So you find actors acts. Okay. So you quit your job. Mm-hmm. You're working as a, uh, you're working as a doorman. Just ignoring these lights. I know. I'm so we're, we're in a, it's going to be a weird for the, <laughs> for the 15 people that are going to watch this on YouTube. God. That was what our first one got on. It's 16 views on YouTube. Um, that, uh, the light, yeah, the lighting's gonna be a little mm-hmm. weird. Um, what, what did you do? Like, so you want to pursue acting, you find actors mm-hmm. access. Or do you start taking classes? Are you like going on actors assets, trying to get auditions? What, yeah. What's the game plan? So this was like what, 2005. I moved here, quit the internship pretty. Okay. Right so you away. moved here before me by quite a bit. I mean, I graduated late cause I played junior hockey, but so you were here a few years before me. Go on. Yeah, I guess I didn't know. Yeah, that. yeah. Uh, so I'm the last generation to fly blind. You were kind of like, <laughs> there were a few years God, between yeah. you and podcasts. Go on. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so I'm walking around with my first generation iPod. Um, How many songs could it hold? You know, you could hold a lot, a lot of songs on there. You yeah. really could. It's funny how we like, I love it when, when we make fun of old technology, yeah. like, like we know how to make it or something. Oh, no, no. <laughs> it's still that thing brilliant. was still a miracle. Brilliant. But brilliant. The, what an idiot that fucking iPod was. So stupid. Couldn't do anything. Uh, so, yeah. I, I, listen, I won't talk shit about that. You the, were talking uh, shit about it. I, you were I, just like to now, so negative. It pro- the first generation I brought probably was what, 1,000 to 5,000 songs? That would be my guess. 
Yeah. Okay. I think like five. I think a lot. Okay. Um, so, you know, yes, I was lucky that I, I started, I became, I got a job as a doorman at a hotel because a friend of a friend who was already living here, he had a job as a hotel doorman yeah. and they were like, yeah, hit, word got to me that like this, I hadn't even met him. I picture but, you as like a Wes Anderson in like a funny outfit. No, it was okay. terrible actually. Okay. The, the clothes were like, what's that brand? Like Cintas, just like... Mm. You know, typical yeah. like custodial sort of. Okay, okay. Just like a blue sh- short sleeve button down. Okay. Like uniform shirt tucked into blue slacks, you know. Okay. Uh, like the worst. Just, and I looked so schlubby. Like none of it fit me right. Uh, but it was this, yeah, I, I had heard, I got wind of this guy who was a roommate of a friend who worked as a doorman and that it was like this sweet job. He got all these tips. He worked at the Bryant Park Hotel. I got a I got a job at this other hotel. It was like a little boutique hotel called the City Club Hotel. But I was lucky. There were all these actors there. I'm still friends with them all. And uh, they were kind of figuring it out too, but they had a, they had years on me. You know, they, they'd been here for like longer than I had and they had figured some stuff out, but they were still sort of, you know, like it was still harder to figure things out back then. You, were, you guys were cobbling together yeah. information. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, so eventually I got on Actors Access. I was taking classes. I, you know, I read some article about Ed Norton taking classes at T. Schreiber Studios, which was a cool little uh, theater school. Um, I started taking classes there. But I just, you know, th- like there was a part of me that was like so excited to, to, to get into it, but I was so terrified at the same time. It felt like I was a freshman in high school all over again. I was in a whole new world. And I my confidence was so low. Yeah. Like I had all these friends from high school and college always talking about how funny I was and how I should go to New York and, you know, try to get on SNL, all that stuff. But then you get here and, you know, I, like all the other guys that I worked with at the hotel were so handsome. <laughs> God, they were all ripped and like they were all like models. Yeah. And I just... uh <laughs> And I was like, oh, God, that's what you that's what you have to look like. Oh, no. You know, and then they they would get me other gigs like catering with them. And everyone would be so goddamn beautiful. And I would just go. I'd be like, I'm going to just go in the back and wash dishes like this is crazy. Yeah. My self-esteem was not doing so well. And then I had this. So I had this other group of friends here who were like my real main friends who we hung out with. Uh on the weekends, hardcore on weekdays. But, you know, my girlfriend and I, you know, we, we, we established this solid crew that were from our uh, college in Williamsburg. And I just sort of had that phase of just like really being a weekend warrior, just partying a lot and like just making money as a doorman and spending it all on PBRs and Bud, Budweiser's at the bars and whiskey shots and that whole there was like a pretty wild era 2000 I can't picture this at all which is hilarious go really? on really I so it's I've always kind of missed like the times we've hung out and uh-huh. I remember like your late 20s you kind of yeah. have one too like another one uh-huh. kind of when you were like working as a bartender again yeah but I kind of missed the hard partying, Brian. You oh, know? my God. Yeah. Well, I never stopped from college. I was like, you know, I never the learned. The nights we hung out, though, maybe it was because I wasn't drinking. So that, what Or nights? you know what else? I think you you had just told me right before mm-hmm. the podcast how you don't you don't slur your words so people don't realize how drunk you are. Yeah. I mean, that's probably what was happening was you might have been hammered. No. And I, I had no idea. Yeah, it's a problem. I mean, I'm... <laughs> I will fall, I will fall over and my walking will be messed up, but yeah. I can cover that up too. But my word, I never really slur. Cause I remember much. going to your fact, 29th I'm smoother. birthday. I should probably be a little drunk right now and this would be way better. No, this is great, man. I, we, I went to your 29th birthday when you were living on the at rooftop. The con- yes. 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 I you were living at the convent yeah. with all these guys. It was yeah. basically like a dorm over oh, was, uh, ch- where the nuns used oof. to live. Yeah. That's a story that, I mean, it really was a beautiful room. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah. And it was, it was magical. A, it was a great time. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Just I'm laughing at that fact that you hit it off with my friend, a gal who was who was there that night, and she gave you her number, and then she ended up getting into a text romance with who she thought was you. Yes. And it was a different person. Yes. And so I was just laughing at that. Yes. I didn't text. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, because she gave you her number and then she just started getting texts from yes. this other guy and she ended up meeting up that guy for a date thinking it was you. So some and someone else entirely yes. different showed up. Yes. So I was laughing at that. That is very funny. Isn't that funny? That is very uh, funny. Yeah. I remember she gave me the only thing I remember I actually don't remember your friend at all, but I remember the thing I do lovely. remember. She gave lovely. me your phone number. Her she gave me her phone number. Mm -hmm. And she drew like on a matchbook and she drew big lips Ooh. next to it. Hubba, I hubba. That. <laughs> Which I always thought was kind of a funny move. Uh, wow. Yowza. Yeah. Um, but that is a, and then I didn't know this until like a year later when we met up uh -huh. and you told me the story of like, oh, she God. thought we were meeting up. That was the, wow. <laughs> what? It's kind of a funny oh. story. Man. Cause and they were I know, texting for a while. I know who she met up with yeah. and he's also a great guy yes but uh yeah unfortunately there wasn't the there was listen wires cross sometimes yeah wires yeah. cross yeah um she dodged the bullet dude um at that time i not was like true I, I was like a year sober at the time you know it was not the, i it was it was not what the, step were you on <laughs> I, I don't even think i was doing anything oh really time. uh at that time yeah i don't think i was oh wow yeah, yeah. um what was I going to say? Where were we? Okay. So you're piecing it all together. Uh -huh. You're, you're taking some classes. Uh -huh. You're doing, you're getting the information you can. You're doing actors access stuff. Oh um, yeah. 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 When did you start working at the casting agency? Cause at some oh, point yeah. you kind of put it together like, Oh, it might be helpful. Cause I've heard right. other actors do that too, where they start working at a casting agency. Yeah. Um, I think, I think the big point I got to make here is I was not really going all in because I was yes, scared. Yes, 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 yes. I was doing the dabbling. bare minimum. Yes. I would submit. I had no agent or anything because mm -hmm. I didn't believe I deserved an agent. Mm -hmm. Really, I was terrified at the idea. You know, I I knew some of these some of these other more confident doorman actors were like, <laughs> "Dude, just go up to the. I know an agent. Like he'd probably love you. Go go up to his office." And I'd be like. Can we curse on here? Yeah, uh, man. Uh, what are you uh, fucking talking oh, about? I'm a, you know me. I'm a I'm a Christian, <laughs> and uh, uh, just kidding. Um, but I was fucking terrified of that. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Go up to like an agent's office. My self worth yeah. has always been low. Yeah, but I mean. So that's why you're a good that. comedic actor, man. I mean, I it's mean, a, where does comedy come God, from? Yeah, it's. I I remember hating that he said that to me because it just made me realize that other people have that sort of confidence and how far away I was from from having that and and being like am I ever going to be able to do this because the the thought of that just scares the shit out of me and so I, I just I just would do the bare minimum I would I would submit for like uh acting jobs on Actors Access that were like, you know, so so for the big ones, I'm just gonna clarify, for big TV shows and movies and stuff like they don't they don't make those available for actors that don't have agents. Agents are using the same program, the same website, but it's called something else. It's called Breakdown Express. And they they have access to it because they are professional agents and they submit their actors. So yeah. it's like a filtration process. Uh but for I, can I just speak to actors? I mean, yeah. as someone who's casted from Actors yeah, Access, yeah, yeah. you need that filtration process, right? Because oh, the you get the amount, yeah, of, yeah Like yeah. I, I listen, we I I put something on mm -hmm. Actors Access, right? How many submissions did you get? I I, I a thousand, yeah, if not more. Like I don't, and right. I had never shot anything, yeah. I had no credibility. I right. just posted on Actors Access, and I guess people thought the project looked interesting. But right. like, I have no idea where they're just like submitting to Dude, anything. It's it's hard. Casting it's, is hard. Casting is hard. And yeah. so the and so basically, agents act as this 
like it's kind of just like they do the re- you know they kind of sift through everybody yeah. so that the cast I'm just saying for the not for Don't, you no, for no, the no, audience no. Uh, like yeah, why do I need, you know because there's just so many aspiring actors oh, in yeah. a town like New York I mean it's 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 important for actors to be reminded of that like I, yes. I remember when I when I heard from a casting director even even on their end when when they're posting uh, and they're only receiving submissions from agents within minutes they'll get like i can't remember the number i've heard but you know eventually they'll have like three thousand submissions from agents yeah, for one role or it's something. insane it's what's ins- that no it's insane it's just the competition is crazy it's crazy the odds are not in our favor to be <laughs> booking work and you know if you are occasionally it's it's great you know uh but yeah so um, where, where were we going here? I'm really sorry. I threw no. you off. Uh, actors access. You oh yeah. Work. I would do the bare minimum yeah. and yeah, you're it, doing the bare minimum. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but really, yeah, I was, I was just, you know, for, for many, many years, it just, I, I didn't really, I didn't really hang out with those other actors aside from work either. You know, I, I mainly hung out with my friends in Williamsburg who were creative and my, my, my girlfriend, she was, she was a, gr- a graphic designer and we would just party, you know, and, and like my whole, I was just, a, I was kind of like, just really like a doorman, uh, my, a career doorman, making, nothing wrong with that, but I wasn't pursuing what I had said I would, really. Um, and I was just sort of, you know, enjoying being like a, the life of the party, you know? I was sort of getting my, my validation from being a jester at bars and with my friends and stuff like that. And, uh, what was the shift? The shift was, well, God, it's, I feel like it was, a, it was many different, a couple different things happened, but, you know, I, I did land, like, I, even in that, even in my sort of, like, lack of going all in, I, like, thankfully, uh, there was a casting agency, House Casting, and I think they've kind of been, Good at, good at um, welcoming their opening doors for like a lot of newcomers. Sort of like they would post auditions for like for some commercials on Actors Access, to, you know, in, in the way that anyone could submit. And I got a couple, you know, I did have headshots taken, and all that stuff. And I got I got a part for like a Virgin Mobile commercial. That was like, I think it only aired on MTV, but it was a lot of fun. It was non-union, didn't get paid all that well, but I was like, holy crap, I got this part. Uh, so I had like a couple experiences like that. Like I got like a short film, but here's... You got a music video too, right? I feel like I saw Yeah, a music I got video. like a music video. That I auditioned for that in this building. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. <laughs> and that was an amazing that. part for me. That was like a really cool. It was more like a short film music video, and the song. Was I remember really seeing cool. it was great. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but you know, I, I got to be honest. What I what I what I realized that I needed to do before those auditions was take shots, okay. and I would put like a little bit of vodka in a water bottle. Wow. I was so terrified. I had such low self esteem. Yep. And it helped me. Uh, and of course, I eventually realized that was very problematic. <laughs> Because, you know, I started to get, you know, I, I, you know, eventually I had an agent. I was going out. How did you get the agent? You're skipping something. Okay. Because so you, yeah, let yeah, me yeah, ask yeah. you this, the booking, uh-huh. so you booking a couple things right. and showing that you were yeah. bookable. Uh-huh. Cause I randomly got a couple auditions where I got callbacks and Good they were you. happy just from callbacks. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and, uh, but so you booking something was like, okay. Is hmm. that how you got an agent? Like to actually mm. be interested? I'm trying to remember. Like, don't say good for me from some callbacks, you asshole. Did I say that? <laughs> good for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't really know you were going out for stuff ever as I, an actor. Well, so the thing is, is it was all it, casting directors who went, oh, to, went to stand, stand up, up exactly. Okay. And they would ask me to come in for this or come in for that. But yeah. it was rare. Uh, it, it, I mean, it wasn't that much. Yeah. But, but um, yeah. Okay. So, so uh, there's this buildup of depression that, that grows in you when you're not, you're not pursuing the, you're not your all love. In. Yeah. You're not, 
yeah, I wasn't all in. And there was always this feeling in me that I was like, what are you doing? You know? And, um, it, there's this thing that I'm terrified of that I so badly want to do. And there's a part of me that knows that I can do it, but I'm still so afraid of, of the rejection, I guess. Um, and you know, deeply insecure and also kind of believing in myself at the same time. But yeah, I, I think, I think that gets to that depression or that, whatever you call that, it got to a certain point where it was unbearable. And, um, you know, I had actually in my Rocky relationship with my college girlfriend, we were incompatible. There, there were just things about, we were really good friends, but we both had our, our shit that we were too young to understand. And we were going on adventures to sort of find ourselves. We went to, to Southeast Asia for four months. We went on a motorcycle this. trip, like across country, zigzagging around for like two and a half months. Those were incredible experiences. But every time I'd come back, I'd be like, I'm still not doing the thing that like I feel this yeah. pull to do. You've read uh, The War of Art, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah. literally just resistance was beating you at that time. Yes. You're literally just not a pro yet. Right. And you know what I also really connect to is in the other than the, his next book where he talks about like you're you're almost it's like you'd rather be a character you'd like to read about. I can't remember what he called it. The romantic version of yourself. Yes. I did that for a long time. Like I would love to play a guy who's like trying to find himself on a motorcycle zigzagging around the country. I'd love to be paid to do that in a movie. <laughs> Instead, I was spending my money to do that in real life, which was an incredible experience. But I learned a lot about myself. But again, I was coming back to a city I hadn't really been going all in. Uh, and, and that got to a certain point where I, you know, I had to address it with, you know, my, my girlfriend and be like, I got I to gotta do this. I, I can't take another job as a doorman. I don't have the energy to work 40, 50 hours. I got to take a break. And I had like... So she was nice enough to sort of like say like, I'll pay the bills for a little while. Well, that didn't work. I, you know, I, I, I was like sitting around our apartment making beats and stuff, which I was decent at. And I'm like, I'm gonna make a short film, but I was still drinking too much, you know? We were still, she, she liked to party. So she would work, we would drink. We had friends that liked to drink. And, and I'm like hung over all the time. Then I get a, I see an ad for an internship at this casting office, Impossible Casting, and it's like a ragtag sort of hippie owner, Craig. And, you know, I'm still cool with Craig, but it was like a, um, a print casting place. But They did other stuff. Yeah, they did. It was mainly print, but they did like a lot of... There's nothing wrong with casting print. I mean, that was pretty cool. And they did some like non-union commercials, but it was, I bombed a commercial audition with them. Once you had me come in and yeah. you're like, just do your thing. And I couldn't do it. You're <laughs> I like, did that for a lot of friends. You go, were like, what do I do? Yeah. You're like, this is yeah. just do what you did in, uh -huh. in class and you're going to get this. And I'm like, oh, and I hadn't like, I'm like, and then I, I bombed it. But go yeah. On. <laughs> yeah. No, it was just, I don't know. It's a, so they had like non-union, uh, commercials every now and then. But it was just it was it was helpful for me and my self esteem to just be like I'm no different than than a lot of these people that I think are great really, it's just there's something that I'm really intimidated about crossing this line from the waiting room, into the thing and, and I uh in, into the actual audition but I, that helped me I, I started to also I interacted with agents on the phone a lot and, I had a good rapport with them, and I ended up finding a, an audition for uh, at Actors Connection, it's this place where you can do like, you can sort of present yourself to industry people for a certain, excuse me, burping into the mic, baby. A certain amount of money you could, you know, showcase in front of a uh, an agent. And so I really liked this woman, Fatima, who worked at Block, which was one of the agencies that I was interacting with. And I did a showcase in front of her and you know, I have long hair and a beard. I love that I say that. I'm like, oh, I, I do again have long hair and a beard. But uh, thank you, pandemic. And uh, and yeah, she she liked me and she brought me into the agency and I'm still with them. And uh, That's great. Yeah. But 
it, it still took me a lot of time before I let go of built up some self-esteem. I was still, they started sending me out on auditions and I was still freaking doing this like a vodka and a water bottle trick that, that, that gave me a little confidence and charisma. And then I remember going, I, I remember having two commercial auditions in a day and I, I like blacked out. I just, I didn't remember everything that happened. This is insane that I'm just finding out about this now. Brian. Yeah. I had no, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I got, I, I can't do this anymore. And I, so I never did that again. And uh, I like, honestly, I, I was, I remember doing internet research. Thanks, evolution of the internet and information that could come out. And I just read about this, about this performance anxiety and how it can be so much more se- severe for other people. Like I, I think I really did feel like my heart would race so much that I would feel my uh, throat close up like and so I bought I read an uh, article on Oprah.com about solutions and one of the things they recommended was uh, a, um, a beta blocker drug called propanolol and that it's a pretty mild unaddictive thing that just slows your heart rate down and I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to order this from India. I have no health insurance. but uh, And I'm going to be real careful with it because I don't want to, like, you know, I don't want to get into some sort of an unhealthy habit with it. And I did. I ordered it from India. And you know what? To be honest, like, I would take, I would actually pour, like, only take half of the, the ones they sent me. I think it was, like, 40 milligrams as opposed to the recommended 80. And it, it just really helped me. And I think that a lot of it was placebo, really. I was taking such a small amount. But, and then eventually, not even like a couple months, I started to just say I don't need that anymore. And, and being at the pit, eventually on a house team, this is all around the same amount of time, uh, I started to realize that, you know, anxiety was just sort of fuel. And I started to have like a more positive relationship with anxiety. Because I would have some some performances, some shows where I'd be like, I'm so nervous right now. But I would just start to kind of play with being like, you know what? Uh, I was incredibly nervous the last show we had, and that was probably the best I ever did. So I don't know. The pit really helped me change my relationship to anxiety, where I used to just view it as this thing that would completely sabotage me and like close up my throat. And I started to be like, whatever, this is like energy that might actually just sort of fuel like a pretty wild and fun performance. That's awesome, man. Uh, and at this point that you're working, no, that's, that's great. I mean, get dealing with that. It's like you do enough, enough reps, yeah. you know what I mean? And you just yeah. get one of the best piece of advice I got when I first started doing stand up mm-hmm. was from an older comic who yeah. said, never drink. He goes, look, really? he, go, he goes, if he goes, look, you're just starting. Yeah. So he's like, if you're, if you drink, you'll yeah. always have to oh, drink. Totally. Yeah. He's like, so just don't right now. Yeah. And it's going to suck because it's kind of a cheat code. Yeah. Cause uh, you know, you'll be nice and loose. Cause it's just getting a huge part of stuff. It's just getting comfortable on, on stage. Totally. Dude. Yeah. It's, so. it's like, and, and you know what? There, there's, I, I actually, I never booked anything significant when when I was drinking. Yeah. You know, I did surprisingly have some pretty close calls for, for such a newbie. Like I, you know, I got some like pretty impressive, you know, television pins, you know, where, where you're being like considered for, you know, as this sort of new actor coming out. But And, I, and I'm going to give your credit. I'm going to do an intro and give your credits, by the way. What's so. that? I'm going to be giving, I'm going to do an interrupt top and I'll give oh, okay. you credits. Yeah. yeah. All those were sober, <laughs> sober bookings. Um, and, and without, and without the, maybe, maybe, uh, I think my first two television credits, orange is the new black and law and order, you know, small, small co-stars that I'm so grateful to have gotten. I think I was, yeah, I think I used that, that medication and, that's great. Super thankful for it. Yo, man, that is phenomenal. Much healthier than, uh, you know, yes. blacking out on shots of vodka. Yes, absolutely. Um, give me one second here. And then, and so at this point, you're all in. Mm-hmm. You're doing your thing. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that kind of, uh, 
I'm really sorry. I just blanked for a second. But um, oh, uh, can I shift gears? Let's shift gears. <laughs> can I shift? Well, it's on the same thing. Um, can you please tell the audience the story of uh, Robert Redford hating you? Oh yeah, <laughs> is yeah, that yeah, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think this 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 really speaks to my uh, insecurities <laughs> and like uh, paranoia. And there's so much. I don't think I'm alone as an actor. I mean, I definitely think I'm in the uh, mentally unhealthy side of the. Maybe I lean a little further in than most people, but. There's a lot that you're susceptible to choosing actor, choosing acting as a career. There's so much uncertainty that it's like you really got to work hard to stay sane. But um, I booked a really fun acting job in The Discovery, uh, a film with Jason Segel and and Robert Redford and Jesse Plemons and, oh, God, I can't remember the other names. Uh, But it was it was such a cool role to get because I was, um, yeah, I was working with Robert Redford. I don't want to give away what happens exactly. What? So it's a spoiler. Yeah, it's a spoiler. And I don't think you should. Anyone listen to this, go on, watch the discovery. It's on Netflix. Brian's beginning. It's the very beginning. So throw it on. And, uh, Brian makes a giant splash. Go on. But I got sick before I shot that. And, uh, I've now really learned, you know, clearly from my uh, everything else I've talked about, I've, I'm always paying attention to substances and what they do to me and everything, you know. And I was taking, uh, I think Sudafed, I think some sort of high-powered Sudafed to keep my freaking nose. Like I was, I got a really bad cold, and I was like, well, I can't, I'm not gonna back out of this. But I, uh, I'm working with Robert Redford, and I'm just convinced he hates me. Because of this, these like subtle sort of facial expressions and all this, you know, and uh, I was playing a sound guy. I was Mike. I was miking Robert Redford, and this is actually really funny. This is why I wasn't convinced that he hated me for this reason. But in the the very beginning, I'm standing between his legs. Kneel, no, I'm kneeling between his legs, pinning a microphone on his lapel. And they yelled cut, and I just stood there for a while between Robert Redford's <laughs> legs. And eventually he goes, son, I think you could probably stand back until <laughs> they, they yell places again. And I was like, oh, yeah, sure, of course, of course. But that was at the very beginning. And he was really nice, but he was getting, you know, like just, I mean, he had a lot to do. He's... There's a lot of expected of him for this film. You know, he was in his, I think, 70s. And I think he had a lot to be... He, he, he was always polite and courteous, but I could just... I, I just had this feeling that he was getting really, really frustrated with me. I didn't consider the fact that it was because he had to do, like, a million takes of this scene because his coverage was the most important. But, like, you know, as a fairly young actor you get this like sort of narcissistic feeling that like it's you're so important and that everything that was going wrong was was my fault and i remember just being so deeply paranoid about it and and sharing that with you and then what is it like a decade later i finally have the awareness to be like oh i can suffer from some extreme paranoia at times he probably on wasn't set, and i don't think it had anything to do with me but i was convinced for like months 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 that, that I robert redford it. hated you yeah but i really do think that the Sudafed, like i was like borderline schizophrenic about it you also had to like do your take of this scene a lot of times, yeah. you know, right. and, and people really need to watch it to understand why Brian will be in a, this, this is funnier when you see the scene. So please watch the discovery, watch <laughs> what Brian does at the beginning and then picture him having to do this a hundred times while thinking Robert Redford hates, hates me. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, very <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny. I always loved Robert Redford and, 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 and we filmed that in Newport, Rhode Island, which was 
where my dad grew up. So I would go there every summer oh, no and I knew, I knew all these spots. And so I had this fantasy. I'm like, man, I'm going to hang out with Robert Redford and we're going to go out for lobster afterwards. <laughs> Just like ridiculous, ridiculous fantasies. Yes. But, but it's also kind of crazy that a lot of crazy fantasies can come true with acting because Jason Siegel, I'm a huge fan of his and Ted Danson, yeah. huge fan of his, um, Mary Steenburgen, huge fan of hers. And I'm like, sh- I was in the scene with her and Jason, uh, I had lunch with Jason Siegel that day. I sat with him, talked, hung out with him. And, um, I remember something he told me, he said about writing. Yeah. Yeah. That oh, we I, talked about writing and he says, you know, he was like, it always helps when you're writing for yourself, you know, you know yourself. And, uh, Ted Danson was there just as like, you know, uh, Mary Steenburgen's husband or yep. boyfriend. I, I, and we, we like sat in the grass and just talked about life, looking at the, the ocean for like a long time. And I was like, what, what a day. What a the day. The joys of being an actor, I knew, man. I mean, yeah. that was, I was so new to it all. And I was like, what the heck is happening? But it was all partially ruined because Robert Redford hated me. We're going to wrap this up. Uh-huh. The question I have, and obviously they can, there's a million different things. Uh-huh. Someone wants to move to New York and be an actor. Uh huh. What's a pe- What's the biggest piece of advice you can give them? Get a like a biker jacket, leather jacket, and like pop the collar, <laughs> and t- get a headshot. Maybe get like a little dangly earring, <laughs> and just be sure to get a really steamy black and white headshot. Yes. With a black leather jacket. Yes. Look very steamy. And um, you're good to go. <laughs> okay. Okay. In all seriousness. Yeah. I would say, okay, someone's moving to New York and they want to be an actor. Yes. Don't, uh, fortunately, do a lot of internet homework and there's so many great articles to read and, and those are probably better than anything I have to say. Yes. But I would also uh, say, don't feel like you need to change something about yourself to fit in, to be an actor, you know, like just be, tr- try to dig deep and, uh, become very proud of like your quirks and, um, and look forward to, to auditioning for characters that sort of match that, that you can bring your, your own personal colors to, you know, like, cause that's, I mean, we're lucky to live in a time where that's what acting is. It's not about being just a leading man and a leading woman or like a bad bank robber or whatever. You know, it's like we all get to sort of bring our own shit into it. And, uh, I think so much of my anxiety in the beginning was like what I was talking about. It's like, I thought that I was supposed to be like super handsome, the super handsome sort of model dude. And I was like, Fuck! I'm not even. I'm By not the way, mad. you're very handsome, my friend. Alex. You know, you're very. I, I know the type of doorman you're talking you about. Know, though you're like, not that, but yes, you're but, very. But handsome. I, I am a, a, an incredibly anxious person. Yes, you know, and I thought that that was not okay. Yeah. You know, and um, when I learned, I got to say uh, something else that was really helpful for me that I forgot to mention was I did. I t- there's a lot of crappy workshops out here and scam artists. But one workshop that really helped me was this. Uh, there's a coach named John Dopolito, and um, what he teaches is he just he takes like five hours and sits and talks to you for a really long time, and he like just tells you like, look, this is the common thread and everything that I heard. Uh, these are the roles that you will be fantastic at, and that gave me a great amount of confidence. Because I was like, oh, even though I didn't go to Juilliard, even though I didn't go to school for theater, my life and my, the dysfunctional path that I had now gives me a lot of clout in a certain group of characters. I lo- honestly, I love that advice. Yeah. I think that's fantastic advice. Yeah. And that also, by the way, like we were talking about 2,000 people submitting. Yeah. Guess how you're going to stand out. Right. That's the only way you're going to be unique. Get headshots that look like that. Wear your hair that looks like that. You know, like <laughs> don't don't just wear like a a button-down shirt and be like I'm a mildly handsome 
guy or attractive woman. Be your most authentic self. Yeah, really What's, try to make it clear, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's fantastic advice. Yeah. Any, you said there's a million articles. And where would you point someone resources wise? That's a good question. I mean, actually, there are like a lot of great articles written by like actors that I know even, you know, like, yep. uh, uh, that are, are in backstage.com. Okay. So uh, backstage.com. Back to, backstage.com does have a lot of great articles. Like, yep. um, uh oh. No, that's the camera. I think Your that's camera it, just man. Died. I th- well, no, well, I think that's good timing. Um, Brian, thank you I so much. I completely miscalculated what? how much time we had. And so I really focused a lot on good, good, good show. <laughs> Wait, what? Finish the sentence. No, it's just so funny. I, I was like, I, I, I had no idea what we were going to be talking about. Yeah, no. I had no idea this how was long great. we were going to go for. My man. And uh, yeah, like I just want everyone to know that I'm not insecure about anything anymore. <laughs> I've got it all figured out. Confident. Well, I, I no bl- longer anxious. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get any. We didn't get into that part. No, Brian, that's hilarious. Uh no man, listen. We're gonna we'll have you back on. We'll talk about the confident. You know, once we got. Oh, I don't. That was all sarcasm. I'm not. Yeah. Brian, thank you so much for coming. Thank on. you so much, Alex. You're the man. Let's let's get some food. The Pit Improv Theater. <laughs> uh, the original one's still around. Hope to see you there. It's really not. It's dead. No, and it's I'm, not. It's never coming there, back. There is still yes. What? The original theater is still it's what? still in existence. Why are you ruining my day right now, you Brian? Need to shut up. Why Alex? are you ruining my day? Zip right? zap zap, motherfucker. <laughs> I do The pit's still around. Pineapple, bitch. Buddy, let's thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Alex.